Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to do a home of a tips video where I'm going to show you how to list your property on home away. I've just listed my 111th property on Airbnb and every time I list a property on Airbnb I'll list it on home away as well because it gives you a wider uh, 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 wider spectrum of uh, customers because once you list a property on HomeAway, uh, if you're using HomeAway.com and your property is in US or Canada, it is automatically going to be pushed to other websites which HomeAway owns like Expedia and um, uh, VRBO and lots of other uh, major websites which are part of the HomeAway group. So uh, without further ado, let me just show you the beautiful listing I've created. This is a bungalow in Hamilton uh, near uh, Toronto. And I've, I've just finished listing it. It is still not live because I'm waiting for a few pricing updates to happen via the pricing dynamic pricing tool. So I thought of listing it on HomeAway as well in the meanwhile while I'm waiting for that. The pictures are amazing. I think this is going to do really well even even though uh, coronavirus COVID-19 is still uh, there are lockdowns everywhere and it is still impacting hotel industry and tourism industry a lot but all my properties um, I've been lucky that all my properties are fully occupied, at least in Canada. So without further ado, let me show you how you get started with listing your property on HomeAway. So uh, this is a profile which I use to list properties on. So assuming you already have uh, signed up on HomeAway.com. If you haven't, I will drop a link in the in the description below you can follow that to list your property and create a sign in before that so assuming you have created a sign in uh, a login for homeaway.com to list your property you will click on my account at the top right screen and click on add a new property and forgot to mention uh, while i'm creating the listing i'm going to show you all the uh, optimization techniques how you should list your property what are the best settings to choose from and what are the impacts of not choosing one option or the other in the settings which are available on home and it it, it gives you uh, uh, a major advantage over competitors who are not using an optimized listing they've just dumped a few photos a few description and that's it they are good to go that is not a professional way of doing it and uh, you're just losing your money and time if you're not optimizing a listing anyway so the property i'm listing today it is a bungalow it's a three bedroom bungalow sleeps six in three queen beds and it has uh, a futon in the living room which sleeps too so eight in total three in three bedrooms six people in three bedrooms and two in the futon in the living room so the first step it says see how much you could earn it, it, this is a mandatory step you still need to do it so i'm going to use three bedrooms and it has i think let me just go back it has one and a half bathrooms so one so one and a half bathroom means it has a full bathroom and a toilet separate to that so I'm going to use three bedrooms, 1.5 bathrooms and click on next. Next, it is going to ask me for an address. This is the address which came up was for a previous property I listed yesterday. So this is the address. I'm just going to copy the address here and paste it in. It automatically picks up the address using Google and then it shows you, look, this is the location home away thinks. And it says, fine, are you okay with the location? So if you are, just move on, click on next. This is just, uh, they're trying to show you how much you can potentially earn. Click on next and it starts loading the listing creation page. Welcome, verify the location of your property. Click continue. 
you don't have to really uh, verify anything physically uh, unlike uh, booking.com where they send you a letter with a code in the post and without that code you cannot make you cannot publish your listing on booking.com which is not the best use of your time and it it, it is booking.com is a pain in my opinion to deal with anyway so I've, I've got the address here i will just quickly check whether the location on the map is correct which seems correct in my case i will click on next again right so it is going to ask me a few things so i'll just carry on without doing much commentary and you can hopefully you can follow what i'm doing I'm just checking all the things I have in the property. Uh, so give your property a headline and description. So I will just copy the headline I've created on Airbnb. So one thing about headline is uh, I always say your headline should be, uh, it should not give duplicate information. So there is no need to tell this is in Hamilton if the property is in Hamilton because when someone is looking at your property they know where the property is they're filtered to that area so try and avoid obvious information because this is the prime space this is the first thing someone is going to read about your listing you want to go leave a good impact the other thing is it has to be attractive it should stand out when a user is looking at 15 or 20 listings on a page that is the click through rate. That is how websites figure out which listing they should, which listing is getting more response from the customers. Uh, it is called click through rate. So they, they are always calculating how many times a listing is displayed to a user and when it clicks on it. So out of 100 times your listing was displayed, only two people clicked on it. That's pretty bad. If 10 people clicked on it the, every 100 times, that is a good sign so that is why i always use these different uh you know characters uh, you can see this ch check sign in my uh, in my headline this basically serves two purposes it one is it gives a precise information of what this is what this place is to attract the user and then the second one is to increase my click through rate it is obviously going to stand out other listings are probably going to have just text in them i've added something else something special and it is i'm hoping it is going to catch the eye of the user so i've copied the headline from there and i'm going to copy the description as well again the description is so all these websites airbnb home away they work on search engine optimization search engine, op search engine optimization is altogether a different topic but very very quickly the two key parameters are first one is click through rate which i explained to you how many times a listing is displayed to the user and they choose yours the second one is how much time the user spends time in reading your listing before they book it these are the two very key uh, factors in optimization of any listing so make sure your description like i have written these are bullet points gives them exactly what they need to know at when they're looking at when they're giving it a quick glance so i have spent about two hours creating these 11 lines i'm just going to copy this but yeah try and make bullet points without giving your perspective of what you think the property is or all those things just be factual tell them what it, what it has what the user gets and that is going to increase the you know that is going to decrease the time user takes to read your listing and press the book button or send your request carrying on so property type is a bungalow let's see if they have bungalow yeah bedrooms three it accommodates eight bathrooms 1.5 click next drag and draw photos so i'm just going to select the photos i have of the property i'm just going to choose these photos first because 
it's usually a pain to drag and drop pictures so I'm just going to choose the first the pictures which I want at the top and then I'm going to choose the other leftover pictures which are not so important they are just prop images just to fill up the space so I'm going to choose all these so the pictures are being uploaded as you can see it is going to take a couple of minutes you can upload up to 50 photos on home away uh, i think we can click next while it is uploading i hope i've never actually done that but let's try that let me try and go back how is it doing if it still keeps uploading no it didn't sorry about that so i'm just gonna choose the photos again i think it just uploaded four photos so i'm gonna choose i'm trying to avoid the main the front photos because it has the property number so i've i've uh, edited one of these images to pad the property house number to keep the privacy and the loading should start yeah it started to upload again let's wait before we click next time it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes anyway um da, 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 da. just gonna choose all these pictures as well and while they're waiting let me just choose the photo which where i padded the house number this is the one okay it is it home away loads pictures quite fast booking.com takes ages and it has lots of glitches and bugs most of the times i've had to upload every single photo individually you cannot do in bulk not ideal not the best use of your time that's why i try and avoid booking.com as much as possible it is still adding pictures right so all the images have now been uploaded and uh, one tip at this point is do not try and organize the images at this point i'm going to come back to that um, in a later stage in this video and also when you're uploading the pictures always make sure you upload at least one exterior image of the property it's very important for people to see how the property looks from outside it, it kind of gives them a sense of security whether it is not a shoddy place which you are trying to list so the, the interior photos can be extremely beautiful but it can be you know uh, in a patchy road which no one wants to be so always try and make sure you add at least one exterior photo and try and hide the address or identifier identifiable information in the image so you know no one can misuse it i will click on next right so it says photos have been done this step is complete i click on next again the next section is going to be where it is going to let me choose the payment account so i'll just quickly choose the one i want click on here agree to the terms etc etc then click on submit it is quickly going to verify some things at the background now it says it gives you two options it says full calendar availability or blocked calendar availability so you choose blocked calendar if you just want to list it for specific days in my case this is going to be a full-time property on home away so i'm just going to list full calendar availability and i will block the dates which i don't want to so i choose the first box and click on next and then it shows you if you want to block some dates you can just click on them and it blocks them but in my case i'll just keep them all open available and click next so now it says how much do you want to charge so at this moment i will just give a random price uh, because uh, i'm using 
external pricing a dynamic pricing tool that it is gonna update the prices anyway after i list it so i'll just put a random value do not put it uh, too low at this point because sometimes what happens is as soon as you publish a listing someone just picks up and books uh, the property within that uh, the, uh, within that few minutes so it's better to put at least a decent amount i'm going to put minimum night stay two uh, i always put minimum nights at two in canada especially because it is notorious for uh, youngsters trying to have a party at the property and they usually book for one night and then they just basically you know a group of 25 of them turn up at the place so I never uh, open my properties for booking for one night in Canada, especially. The next section is, would you like to offer a 20% discount to your first three guests? Uh, and no, because I, it gets confusing when I'm doing pricing. I try and make sure it is the right price. And then on top of that, if it gets discounted, I've, I've, I've done some mistakes in the past. So I click next and then it says what tax rate I will say do not include tax rate and just click on next. And it says cleaning fee in this case cleaning fee is 90 uh, Are pets allowed and this property. No, I do not allow any pets. So click on next. You finish setting up your rates and click continue. Right, so it says blah blah blah. You're ready to publish, and then it gives you the you know phone number so you can choose. I will. I've done that already a few times, so I don't need to validate the phone numbers again. And there it go. It is saying your property is ready to publish. So now at this point, I'm just quickly going through the publishing. Uh, publishing task because once I publish it, I'll be able to see a lot more options to choose in the property. So I'm just quickly rushing through the publishing at once and then I'm gonna go back into the property and tidy it all up. So don't think it is so easy and so quick. I'm just gonna click publishing, publish listing, and then I'll go to my dashboard find this property again and then the real work starts okay so it has automatically taken me back to the property now next i will click on property and then edit property now it starts giving you all the you know options of what you have in the property what you provide and all those things so in my case i'm just quickly going to carry on doing this Safety features, exterior lighting, yes, deadbolt lock, yes, uh, carbon monoxide, fire extinguisher, first aid. I always recommend uh, to have at least these last four uh, safety equipment in your holiday let. Smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, fire extinguisher, and first aid kit. It, 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 it protects you against so many things, and it is probably going to be a lifesaver for someone if something goes wrong and it, it, these things don't cost uh, a huge amount anyway so i carry on and this uh, emergency exit instructions i always write uh, the emergency exit so i'm going to say it can be as simple as exit from through the front door to the street now it is all about protecting your back if something goes wrong I'm just going to give police numbers because sometimes people are traveling uh, internationally. Okay, so that's the first part of it is done. Safety features. I'll go back to the amenities tab again and then I'm going to here say property type, bungalow, sleeps in bed. So this is how many people do sleep in the property basically. So I'm going to choose eight. Uh, don't bother if you know put it but don't bother putting the living area and all those things suitability senior adults community no long-term renters welcome events allowed no and then i'm just quickly gonna check all those things which are there in the property oven stove 
kettle, dishes and utensils, grill, no. Refrigerator, no. Oh, yep, yeah, I've got a refrigerator, toilet paper, fireplace, heating, living room, towels provided, washing machine. There is one car park, paper towels, basic soap, hair dryer, linen provided. There's no gym. Um, there's no safe, baby iron and board. There's no wood stove, clothes dryer, yeah, shampoo, yeah. Uh, there is a television and no other things. Uh, no pool in this property. Outdoor futures features. It has a balcony. Not draw the balcony. Yet. It's a patio and a garden backyard. Click on save. Right, so that is the amenities thing. Safety and features, we have done that. Location, uh, I always choose display my property location. It gives them uh, a more precise location of your property on the map. I think it helps unless you have strong reasons not to. Uh, nearby places and activities, just choose car and necessary in this case. Uh, sometimes when I'm not feeling lazy, I add all these nearest airport, beaches, ferry, but home away, I've seen recently, they populate these things automatically based on the, the location of your property. I'll click on save here. Now settings and views, so this is what, I mean, what kind of setting is the property in? So in this case, it is um, town. Mm, not too much local attractions and activities i'm not gonna bother uploading them uh, yeah i'll just skip all that there is no local services and business this is majorly for hotels where they provide laundry service and all those things oh i forgot to save i click on description now so the property name, the first field you see is the internal name. No guest or user of the website will be able to see it is purely for your reference. So I'm going to say Tanya Hamilton. And a summary is this is the summary, whatever you enter here, it is going to be displayed just before the prop, the description uh, of the property. So I'm just going to say beautiful. Uh, three bedroom bungalow in uh, Milton. Just try and populate all as, as much as detail as you can because uh, it, it gives you added advantage. You're giving more text to the search engine of the website to read and rank it. Uh, ideal for family. Even if you're repeating it, that doesn't matter for families with backyard and parking all right so oh, i've crossed the character limit so let me try and trim wherever i can yeah that's it always try and make uh, take use of uh, all the space you can at least on the headline and the summary it's a it is a premium it is a prime uh, space. I'm gonna upload. The, it is. It is very important to upload the user photo as well, because it gives a certain kind of comfort to the person. Look in the place. Oh, I think I've chosen a wrong screenshot. Always put a photo uh, of the owner because it gives people, you know. A comfort to try and uh, upload uh, a family photo if possible i'll just put the date 2010 click on save and then i go to contacts i'm gonna skip this part because i've done it a few times at the bottom you can give the languages spoken i will choose english in this case photos so this is where you have to organize the photos so th the reason 
why uh, you need to reorganize the photos is when the user looks at the listing, uh, HomeAway automatically shows the top six photos to the user on the display page before they click on the photos to see the details. So I'm going to bring the best six photos right to the top to impress the user at that point. So that one, and I'm going to drop at least one exterior photo for the user to see because it's very important, as I said earlier. So I'm going to drop that. So this bedroom photo is good. Let me see if I can find some other good photos down there. Yeah, this one, or rather this one is good. So I'll drop that here. I uh, got four photos at the top now. Let me see if I can get something for the kitchen. Yeah, mm, kitchen is good. Try and pick one photo for each space in the property. That gives them an eyeful right in the very first instance. So I've got these and let me just try and pull a bathroom photo as well. Uh, yeah, this looks okay. That's it. So don't bother ending the photo captions uh, at the moment. It doesn't really help. Um, so click next after this. Rooms and details. Here you have to enter all the, the sleeping arrangement, basically. So I'm going to add the first one, which is a master bedroom. You don't need to type bedroom here. And it has a queen bed. Next one, I'm going to add bedroom two. It has a queen bed too. And the third, it has a queen bed too. And we have, if you remember, we have a futon in the living room as well. So I'm going to add living room and bedroom type other and I'm gonna add a sleeping sofa one that's it so that is a sleeping arrangement we have added for bathrooms we're gonna say uh, family bathroom it is full it has a combination shower and a toilet save and then we have a half toilet. So I'm going to say this is ensuite. So I'm going to call it ensuite and it's a toilet. Save changes. We have a dining area as well, which sits six. Child's high chair. Yes, we do provide such child's high chair in this property. Breakfast is not available. Ask housekeeping you can ask if you if sometimes people want more frequent cleaning if they are uh, staying there for a month or for, for a few weeks and they obviously pay for in between turnovers or cleanings if they want next one is uh, other services no we do not provide the theme is romantic and family That's it, I think. And then we jump on to the rates. So I'm going to skip the rates part as at the moment, because as I mentioned earlier, I'm using a dynamic pricing tool and I'm going to do a separate tutorial for the dynamic pricing. But the key thing is still, there are a few things you can do. You should do here is go into the rate settings at the top right corner choose the first one and that is going to bring the whole menu just type 250 for now <clears throat> weekly discount if you want to offer i always offer 10 and 5 percent discount and then you click on save um, booking requirements minimum two night stay fee is cleaning fee is 90 pounds there is no extra guest fee at the moment i would say Per guest per night, five dollars extra for more than six people. So I would eight uh, people who can sleep in this property. 
uh, six in the bedrooms and then the sofa bed uh, for the for the rest of the two so putting up the sofa bed is additional cost for my cleaning uh, and linen company so i always uh, charge for the sofa bed on top of that plus it also um, reduces your chance of miss someone misusing the space because it becomes more expensive for a bigger group uh, in the less custom fee you can add uh, other fees if you have air conditioning fee bath linen it is a good idea to put a linen fee separately in this case i have added nine in 90 pounds i've added everything but it is a good idea to uh, add a linen fee separately so i could have mentioned 60 pounds for cleaning and 30 pounds 30 dollars for linen that would just give uh, the user more clarity of or the breakdown of the 90 pounds they can understand why I'm charging 90 pounds. It's a good idea. Remove. I'm just going to let me just do that rather. $60 for cleaning and a linen fee is per stay 30. Save. Uh, the next one is taxes. Not going to bother that refundable damage deposit it's a good idea to always charge a refundable non -refund, refundable damage deposit to the guest it makes them more responsible payment terms i always choose payment terms of 25 percent in the first when they're making the booking and then they pay 75 percent 14 days before arrival it just gives them additional flexibility and i believe that brings you more bookings in the long run so that is all the pay the payment and the rates related the last thing you need to do is rules and policies so click in there and that's where you can mention your cancellation policy i'll go into house rules and cancellation policy tab once you're there click on moderate in my case uh, it's always a good idea to keep moderate because relaxed is uh, i mean sometimes you end up losing money um, unless you're really struggling with the property uh, i would always choose moderate the next option is check in after and check out i always choose 3 p.m is the check-in time and check out is 11. it is the most optimum time to allow check-ins and check out because if you if you try and shift it a bit it is going to cause inconvenience to your guest and eventually it's going to lead to less bookings mm -hmm. In the house rules, maximum eight, maximum people eight. You can sometimes uh, allow kids on top of eight, but I don't do that. Minimum age requirement, I always make sure 24 years old person has to be. Parties and events allowed, no. Pets allowed, no. Suitable for children, yes. Smoking allowed, no. And then I always add two rules. Uh, no loud music at any time and no undeclared guests at any time these are the two conditions i always add to my house rules sometimes people try and be cheeky they say well i had this this uh, this couple come over just for the night they, were, they didn't stay here they were here and they left in the evening i don't want all that hassle no one comes in the property without me knowing it and they just misuse it right so pretty much it i think the listing is all done apart from one thing which is the syncing the calendar home away calendar with airbnb calendar for that i'm going to go into calendar and reservations and then i'm going to choose export calendar export calendar include tentative reservations in this ex this export and i copy the url you this is your iCal url for your home of the calendar so copy this I will go to Airbnb and then import this calendar. Import calendar here. I'm going to paste the URL and I'm going to give it a home away. 
import calendar and now i need to export the calendar of airbnb so it is both ways so airbnb export calendar i'll go back in here and click on import calendar calendar name airbnb and i will enter the url choose always choose block dates import calendar that's it so now both your listings will always stay in sync uh, bear in mind this this kind of syncing is not uh, real time there is always a lag so it doesn't protect you against double bookings you should if you're you should always refresh your calendars manually if you want to make sure the there are no double bookings because iCal calendar sync is uh, a time base it is not triggered on every event uh, it, it is not going to trigger a refresh in the other calendar every time you receive or cancel a booking so it is a good idea to import uh, refresh it manually if you want to make sure you never get double booking you should have a channel manager you should use a channel manager tool which makes sure all your calendars are always in sync without a second's delay right so that's it the property is now ready if you want to see how it looks on home away let me just close airbnb so if you want to see how your property looks on home away click on this at the top left on the picture and that loads your property on home away uh, everything looks nice and if you see this is the the after the headline i added a, a top description that is shown here everything looks nice um yeah this is this looks good and um uh, as i mentioned earlier home away automatically pushes your listing to other platforms so at the moment as soon as you list it on home away it directly goes on vrbo and it is live on vrbo already uh, you can see let me show you i'll go back into the listing uh, click on my account and click on property details this is where you'll be see the extra expedia distribution link so it is going to be pushed to expedia but not straight away I, I don't know when how long it takes to push a listing but i always find it when i go back after a week so let's say after a week it is going to be available on expedia as well to see your property on Expedia, you just need to click on this, go here and click on this link button and that should open your property's Expedia page. I don't think it's gonna take us anywhere at this point because as I said, it takes about a week to be pushed to Expedia. A couple of other things on HomeAway, you might be aware, you may not be. Uh, HomeAway offers a subscription service. So, i'll show you listing plan so this is the these are the two options so you can pay an annual fee of 499 dollars on home away and then they reduce your commission to three percent from eight percent otherwise you can just pay per booking and they charge eight percent for each booking i don't never pay the annual subscription because the amount of bookings i receive on home away they still don't make up for 499 dollars so in future if my bookings increase a lot i will probably go for this but so far i've never paid subscription fee i won't recommend you to choose this option either so that is pretty much it if at any point you want to pause the listing you can just click on pause here or hide it the difference isn't much uh, and if you want to edit the property you can just go back in there and that should take you to the same edit page which i demonstrated earlier so that's pretty much it this is how you list a property on home away with all the optimization techniques if you have any queries or questions for me please feel free to drop me a comment uh, i'll be happy to answer your queries 
If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel. I will be posting more such videos in future about listing the property on different other platforms like booking.com. And I'm going to do a tutorial on Airbnb optimization, how to set the dynamic pricing up, how to set the channel manager up. Until next time.